For more on China's Greater Bay Area, I'm joined from Burbank, California by Ryan Patel, Senior Fellow with the Drucker School of Management at Claremont Graduate University. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So as we saw there, a comprehensive plan with each region responsible for different aspects of development. What's your thought on this strategy and the areas being focused on? Well, it's definitely what you would call a blueprint. And, I, you know, I will go as far as to say it is definitely a necessity because they were, what they're trying to do is diversify uh, the industries. I think that is really key if, if China wants to become the, the superpower that it wants to hold that lasting power over the next 10 to 15 years and more on, they needed to have a diversity. It couldn't just focus on one sector. And that's, you know, they were taking the strengths of this greater Bay Area and saying, and, and making sure in the blueprint that every sector was covered in a way that they can put, invest more into it. And so do you see some sectors being the priority in terms of being the first ones to benefit? You know, obviously, you know, what was kind of underlining in there, it was kind of softer in, in language to me, but, you know, the, the innovation hubs, right, being the tech incubator, to me, that stood out the most because China's always been trying to catch up if, uh, with other smaller countries like Singapore, um, France, and London, you know, even, even cities like London, where they are kind of focusing on fintech. But when now they're really fo focusing on being the incubator, which also means that they want people to come and stay in the region and build their companies there that would obviously help. And the second piece to me is smart cities. I think that stood out because I think they wanted to uh, integrate that the, the future of technology and into the cities, into all the regions. So, I mean, obviously that's easier said than done, but that to me kind of st stood out. So then with the growth of these tech hubs and obviously having people working now closer together, talk about some of the business opportunities that come with that integration, for example, infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've seen that they've, what they've done with the infrastructure on, on connecting all the cities and ensuring that there is easier transit and trade and even the move of, of the workforce. I think that will be really key in any city. If you like, look at Silicon Valley in New York or any big city, it's great to have all these resources, great to have this talent, cities and, and even companies, but how do you make it convenient and how do you really make it easy so that you can continue to move forward and continue to increase the GDP in that region, which, you know, it's by itself right now is in the top 15 of the world if you combine all that. So it, it, it will have some pressure to continue to move forward. And as you mentioned, trying to get 11 cities all on the same page, some of them using different currencies, that's, that's no small feat. So what do you see as some of the main issues that might further obstruct the development of the Greater Bay Area? Yeah, everything that has an advantage definitely has some disadvantage. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think the, the details in this blueprint that is yet to be seen is how the policy will be really written out. Obviously, you've seen in the, in the segment before that about what Hong Kong was saying, Hong Kong citizens, about how they are going to be treated and how, how is it really going to be truly integrated. And I think it, it's, it's a fair point. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody really has an answer how it's going to go forward, but I think there needs to be a lot of focus um, on how the integration is, is in maybe taking that next step and maybe take some lessons learned from other hubs around the world, even like a Silicon Valley, even though it's, they're not, it's one system in the U.S. and California, but how do you really integrate that whole area in a way that you don't alienate the, you know, the kind of, I would say, the entrepreneurial spirit in some of these cities? And speaking of Silicon Valley, obviously there are going to be comparisons drawn. So how would you say China's Greater Bay Area compares with, say, the others in California, New, New York, and Tokyo? Well, in, in massive space, I mean, from a landmass, it's a lot larger. But, you know, f for me, I, if I'm China, I don't want to compare myself to Silicon Valley in New York. And this is why. It, it's because they want to be better, right? I think Silicon Valley has done, it, it done, has done a great job, but you're now starting to see now other entrepreneurs, VCs are looking elsewhere too. It's hard to keep, when you're at the top, it's hard to keep that talent in if you're not being innovative enough. And I think with what I think what China is trying to do in diversifying with different industries and kind of creating a place to stay and capture and have enough space to, help, to host all these resources, they have an ability and a chance to maybe grab talent from there, grab talent internally and be able to house everybody in one place. That's what makes it really special in this place because of, of all the different cities involved, all the different cultures, all the different um, e even, you know, city, you know, Minneapolis, sorry, different cities and, and rules. 
Now, we did see the cost of living really skyrocket in some of these other Bay Areas, obviously Silicon Valley, a prime example. So how do you see in, in the greater Bay Areas um, instance, how do you see that affecting local residents? And how can they avoid some of the issues that other Bay Areas have faced with this? Well, yeah, I mean, that that for sure. If you look at Silicon Valley, and uh, you can't even live there anymore. <laughs> we can't find space and it's too expensive. But I mean, I think what, what you see in Hong Kong, I think, is when you see real estate prices raising. And, you know, I think the plan, at least in the blueprint, is to kind of somehow help that and create opportunities elsewhere will be an interesting um, blueprint to see how they deal with that going in, in the future because when you create something of this kind of high demand it will have a detrimental effect of real estate prices increasing where do you do with the with where you put the jobs where are they going to go like all of that has to be played out i know that th this is just a blueprint but you know in the next year or two you'd want to be able to address that now instead of five years from now when you're already in it Indeed. Thank you so much for your insights. Ryan Patel there, Senior Fellow with the Draca School of Management at Claremont Graduate University.